today. I think what's critical is the Russians need to be more serious about getting the Assad regime to adhere to the terms of the ceasefire, which began last Monday. Humanitarian goods were supposed to flow thereafter. We expected, hopefully by Wednesday, Thursday at the latest, and we're still trying to move the humanitarian goods. So rather than calling UN Security Council meetings and being hypocritical about who'd done what after they have bombed schools and bombed civilians and bombed hospitals, they really need to get down to the business of making this work. And that requires Assad to be more responsible. He uses the excuse of going after al-Qaeda, Nusra, and uses it to bomb the opposition. And everybody knows that. So the best thing the Russians can do is keep him from flying now if they want to have a joint implementation center set up to be able to cooperate. It's time for seriousness. Now, we're working to keep the opposition responsible also. We have a, we have a responsibility too, but we're exercising it and we're working with the opposition. It's very hard for them to stop when people are bombing them on a daily basis. You'd initially hoped that the aid would start flowing into these areas the day after the ceasefire came into effect. It didn't, so what went wrong? We really thought not the next day. It was permitted to go in the next day, but realistically we knew it was going to take a day or two to set up the logistics, get the clearance and move in. Right, but it's still not in. That's correct. Now, they say that the permissions have been given, that the visas are given for people to come in and do the things necessary. Uh, the UN trucks are lined up and ready to go. But the test is really going to be tomorrow, the next day, let's see whether they're real or not. You put so much of your own effort into this ceasefire. What happens now for the people of Syria if this truth doesn't hold? Well, uh, look, I'm, <laughs> my job is to be optimistic and to try to make things work. So I, I'm not going to look on the dark side at this point in time. We all know it just gets worse. That's the answer of what happens. But I don't want to go there, and nor do a lot of people. So the key is for both sides to live up to responsibilities and move as rapidly as possible to try to see whether or not the people of Syria can be given a reprieve from this extraordinary, irresponsible, reckless violence that is taking place.